Hello, beautiful people. It has been about three and a half years since I got off of benzos and I used the mushroom that my channel is about to do it. And I get a lot of questions about, you know, like, how are you doing now? And I remember thinking if I could ever get off of them, what would my life be like? Like what, what will go away and what won't? What will be recovered and what won't? Like what's permanent and what isn't? And I get a lot of questions about the supplements that I took and stuff like that, even though I've made a whole video on the supplements that I've taken. And a lot of you write to me and ask me detailed questions. I'm gonna sum all that up here in this video and tell you what I have gained, what I've gotten back, you know, the ups and downs and what it's like to live in my body today without benzo, still haven't taken any. And the supplements that I'm still using and some new ones that I've incorporated since that last video and how, what I've noticed about using them. And then some specific information about the Ashton protocol, the method I used, dosing and this mushroom, all that stuff. So that's the order that I'm gonna go in. I am Amnita Dreamer. I got off of benzodiazepines three and a half years ago using the Amnita muscaria mushroom to do it. I have the story of how that happened uh, and it is the one that is before this video. AmnitaDreamer.net. Questions, anything, AmnitaDreamer.net. If you wanna be involved in a community of other people, like-minded, having done the same, mushroomvoice.com. So I am three and a half years out. And what I noticed was in the first year, well, I mean, the, the symptoms and everything went away immediately with that very first dose of Amanita. And I was down to one tablet, one, I think it was 0.3 mil or three mil. I can't remember now, it's been so long. But I was prescribed three clonopin at night, every night. Plus, you know, trying to withdraw from that shit and, and being miserable or just peeking on it and it not working anymore and needing more and, and I was on mirtazapine and I don't know, I can't even remember now, I've blocked it out, but I was on three different medications trying to cope with it. But personally, between you and me, I was also taking painkillers and drinking. And I would try not to do both of those two things at the same time, I'd pick one or the other, but there were times that the alcohol got so high that I don't understand how it didn't kill me. So this is in an attempt to reduce your, the danger threshold for you. If you are at that point and you're trying to get, you know, so what I did is I first, I cut off all extracurricular things. I have to choose my words carefully here. Then I got off of all the others that were not the benzo. When I was finally down to the benzo, then I started tapering using the Ashton protocol. And what the Ashton protocol does is you get down to one tablet, however many you're taking or whatever you're taking, you get down to one tablet. And you can break those in half and in quarters, but I got tired of doing that, trying to break it. And when you get down to a quarter, you're supposed to just put it in, in water that's measured, that has numbers down the side. So you know exactly how much water you're dealing with. And I went on at one whole tablet and put it in here so that I wasn't seeing myself fall from one quarter to a half to, it was messing with my head. I had tried too many times and it was messing with me psychologically to do it that way. So what I did was put a whole one in water and I started tapering with one pill in here and I would drink the whole thing, right? And then as I wanted to taper, I would do it in, in increments. I'm not even gonna tell you how many increments at a time. In the Ashton protocol, you do it by percentages. And so you can read the Ashton protocol and you can do what the Ashton protocol prescribes or says or gives you ideas that you can do. You can drop in any way that you have discussed with your healthcare provider. And that is between you and the person who gives you medical advice, how you're going to do that. I'm just saying I took it out of pill form and put it in water so that it made it easier for me to quantify it and it quit messing with my head, right? And what I noticed the very next day after I finally got off of it when I was when I took the mushroom and and, you, and that whole story that's also in this playlist, I had no more symptoms, zero symptoms after that, just none. I was concerned, you know, about my brain capacity and memory and ability to work and function and all that. And I got on Lion's Mane immediately. I had already been researching it. 
and the lion's mane has been one of the main things that has really helped. And for some reason, I, I think that Amanita really helps with the nerve pain, but when it's in that 50-50 mix of half Ibo and half Muscomol, and I have videos on that on AmanitaDreamer.net, how to make that 50-50 mix, you just use the how to make the tea. And three years out, where I'm at now, after using Lion's Mane and Cordyceps, Cordyceps was a big one, Shilaji, which is a black resin from a tree, has all the minerals that you need in this resin. And I've learned since then that a lot of damage was done. Well, I'm automatically just sort of deficient in, in magnesium, vitamin K, and other things that I can't maintain in my blood because of autism. That's, that seems to be a thing with autism. But I also read that benzodiazepines destroy a lot of the pathways where those things are made bioavailable. And so you have a hard time with some minerals. I think that, I don't know if I'm ever really gonna fully recover from that, but I know that my the calcium pump that whole system I feel like is damaged in me and then the potassium and magnesium situation. So one of the other things that I put into my diet is salt substitute. If you look at salt substitute, it's potassium instead of sodium. And that's a really great way to get potassium every day, but you also still need sodium and our, our culture is kind of freaked out about sodium and getting too much sodium because of packaged foods. But if you aren't eating packaged foods or fast foods, which you shouldn't be if you're trying to heal your body from this stuff. Eat as close to the land as, you need sodium and you need potassium. So those supplements so far, and the Shilaji, those are the things. I also have a magnesium supplement, that Calm, C-A-L-M on Amazon. I, that kind of magnesium is bioavailable in the evenings. That is very important. We're helping me get through the night. I can take it every night for weeks and then not take it for, excuse me, a couple of weeks. But after a couple of weeks, I start to notice muscle spasms and issues with it, with magnesium and potassium. But I feel like the bulk of the damage has healed. I feel like the lion's mane did a lot of the healing of that because it's the myelin sheath over the nerves that get damaged. And then that causes the twitching in the muscles, which can cause all that spasming and stuff. So as I am now, I feel like I'm kind of going backward a little bit as far as pain and spasms. I mean, I'm three years older. I wasn't a spring chicken when I started all of this. I mean, aging is a thing and menopause is a thing and all this happened in menopause. And it, probably if you're younger, you'll have a much better rebound rate. But I can tell you that if I take the lion's mane for six weeks straight, I, I try to take it about six weeks and then give it a break a little bit. I do start to see a little bit of going backward in my vocabulary, my syntax, the way that I think, how I think, the sentences I put together, how complex they are, how much multitasking I can do, that kind of thing. I notice that I can get a little overwhelmed faster and I don't bounce back as quickly. But I have to say, three and a half years out, I feel like I recovered to 90% of my capacity within the first year and it took about a year before i leveled off nine months to a year and i would still get some spasms but it's always just in this one nerve instead of it being my whole body or my foot or hands or all over or whatever it's always this one nerve and it's because i think it's just where i was hit when i was a child and it sort of has trauma tied to it but also that nerve is where I got shingles while I was on benzos in those five years trying to come off of them. I got shingles every single year for four years and it damaged that nerve. So I still get muscle spasms along the nerve, all the muscles that are along that nerve. Every once in a while, I will still get a foot or a hand spasm. And I pay attention to my diet and realize I haven't added any potassium, magnesium, sodium, I missed the shilaji, whatever. I didn't, I didn't take that stuff for a couple of days. I got busy or whatever, especially when I travel. So that will cause that. I'm overwhelmed right now because this is 2022. It's the year of traveling and making the documentary while also building a lot of websites and finalizing them and getting off Patreon and dealing with a bunch of censorship and a lot of haters as stuff spreads and more and I'm on more podcasts and more people show up and they don't understand this mushroom or what's happening with it and I have to just keep dealing with more and more censorship and putting more layers between me and the public and making it harder to get to me 
So that's what I'm dealing with and it's, it's overwhelming and it's taxing. And then I have to deal with anxiety. So I still take uh, this and I have it, this is the way that I tell you to make it. This is what my channel is about. And I make it in a batch of one cup and I put it in quarter cups and freeze them in these containers. And that way, this is now what I use, what I take. This is a 50-50. And when I'm ready to take it, I'll put it in my tea and add a little bit of lemon and that'll push it a little bit more decarb, you know, so there's more muscimol, especially at night. I have videos on full decarb and the muscimol that doesn't have any of the acetylcholinergic side or the upside. And it is all the muscimol side or the calming side of what this thing can do. And you can certainly make that and use that as what you're trying to do. But I have this intuitive sort of sense about it in addition to the research on what these two things do and talking to experts and have sort of put together that it seems to me that it's better to leave the mushroom in as much of its original state as possible. So when you make the tea, like that's just it. You do it as simply as possible. Make the tea and use that and let it do its job. I think it's an adaptogen. If you don't know what an adaptogen is, you can Google that part and look it up. As far as telling you how to go from your version of water to your version of this, that is practicing medicine without a license. And I cannot answer those questions no matter how much you write to me and ask me. I can't tell you what I did. I can't tell you how I did it. So what I'm going to tell you is even doctors who can practice medicine with a license online, they can't treat anybody or give them dosing information because they have to do an evaluation or they could lose their license or they could lose their insurance. So they still cannot diagnose or treat anyone online without speaking to them personally and doing sort of an intake. And I am not a medical professional and I get watched and shopped. I have worked for three years to educate, to be on podcasts, to make hundreds of videos, to build three websites, to do everything I can to help you. After that, you're going to have to watch the video on how to help yourself medically, how to start taking responsibility for yourself and how to start listening to your inner voice and how to get there. I have so many videos on have coffee with me where I teach you about that inner voice and growing that inner voice. I understand when you are living in constant panic and anxiety, you don't hear it. One step at a time, getting yourself off of certain things and then on other things that help balance your body and heal your body. Then you've got to address your diet and the right supplements and the things that you want to take between you and your medical professional and how you want to heal your body. One of the things that I am working with that has really made a big change in my gut, I feel like benzos damaged my gut flora and my immune system was raw milk. And I didn't find out about raw milk until I was trying to figure out how to make Soma. And what it did for my gut health and for my immune system was just a whole game changer. So now I incorporate raw milk. I get it from a dairy, not a dairy, a farm near here, about an hour from here. I see the cows, they're in the field. I know what they do and how they live and how they run their place. And it's a single family that I get this from. And I use it like medicine. And then I also make this with it to do a full decarb for times when I am just a little too high strung and I can't go to sleep. I have Mushroom Voice, which is, is communitymushroomvoice.com. You can go to mushroomvoice.com and just click right there on the banner and go to our community where you can talk to other people that are doing this, have some other like-minded individuals. We have Zooms. We get together all month long. There's one Zoom that I do every month where I am there and I answer your questions. You can join us that way. I make and sell stuff that has Amanita in it, but it is not this. If you want to make this, I have approved vendors on AmanitaDreamer.net. Go to where to buy. And they sell and they've been vetted and you can trust them. You can get the whole mushroom from them and then you can make it yourself. So you can feel free to do that. 
What I can't do is answer your email questions. I'm very sorry. I know that you are desperate. If you know anything about me or you've watched my stories and my videos about me, I know where you're coming from. It doesn't change the fact that I have now read hundreds, probably closing in on a thousand or over a thousand emailed stories of your lives. And it's, it's emotionally heavy to read them. And I finally had to say no more. Please don't email me anymore. I'm not gonna answer you. I can't answer you. I don't have time to answer you. I can't do it and I'm really sorry. So please don't ask. I care about you. It's, I've devoted my entire life to this. I defend you online everywhere. I defend this mushroom and I, I try to teach people to stop calling it deadly and all that online, but to also stop using the red and white mushroom when they mean psilocybin because then when I try to talk about this one, people think I'm talking about psilocybin and they're not the same medication so or mushroom. So I'm trying to educate for you guys, trying to help you. I'm trying to do everything legally that I can do and also get the information to you without censorship, which has proven extremely expensive for me. Thousands of dollars per website. I hope that this helps give you some hope about what happens to your brain that you can get it back. You can be highly productive to your body that you may not get 100% back, but you can definitely lead a life again. I don't know what you will be able to do with what you have at your disposal, but I wish you the best. I wish you health. I wish you healing. I wish you sanity and I wish you peace and contentment. Thanks for being here. Love you beautiful people.